Hello, I am Joanna Pepin and I work at the University of Buffalo and I'm here today with Professor Philip Cohen from the University of Maryland and he wrote the textbook The Family, Diversity, Inequality and Social Change and we thought it would be fun for, for us to hear a little bit about um, his profession and the textbook. Um, so I will, I'm happy to speak with you today. Great, thanks. Happy to be here. Our first question um, is, we were just curious if you could tell us a little bit about what led you to becoming a family sociologist. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think it was, um, I, I was interested in inequality and um, a lot of the inequality questions I was thinking about kept leading me back to families, especially things having to do with sort of intersections of race, class, and gender. Um, so if you ask questions like, um, uh, why do uh, women do more housework and childcare? I um, mean, part of that is because um, they're single parents and that, so that's a family question. Why are more uh, parents single now than they used to be? And who decides who's married and why people are married? And what are the consequences of that for um, health and well-being and income? And so um, I just kept coming back. Um, to family topics, um, you know, uh, things related to like, what is the government going to do? Is it going to, is it going to give people money if they're poor? Is, it, is that going to be based on their family structure? Is it going to um, penalize people for their family choices? Is it going to let people get married if they're gay? Is it going to, um, uh, you know, all these things that have to do with people's well-being and, um, and social inequality go through family. So that's how I got led into it. Interesting. Your, uh, your textbook takes a very life course approach to studying families uh, and looking at trends over time. What would you say is one of the biggest transformations of, of American families? Um, if you look at the long run, um, I think that the paired, the, the, the dual change of fewer children and um, women working outside the home um, th those two things sort of happened together over the last couple of hundred years. Um, and I think that's the biggest transformation overall. So um, fewer children means less work to be done at home because a lot of work is care work and housework related to children. Um, and that's partly because women had other opportunities to do things outside their homes and partly the other way around because women were doing other things, they had fewer children. Um, but the, the reason that's so foundational is because it totally transforms um, family relationships. You know, having fewer children changes the relationship between parents and children. Um, uh, it means we have, we're investing more in each child um, than we used to, so kids spend more years in school with more resources. And it also means our relationships um, are longer, people are living longer, so you have fewer children and, um, you know, now you have like a 70 or 80 year relationship with your children um, and there's only one or two of them instead of um, having a 40 year relationship with you know, eight or 10 kids. It's a whole different relationship. Um, so it's that transformation of opportunity and the way people spend their time and energy um, that, that's um, very foundational, I guess. Sure. We, uh, we all come to, you know, studying families with our own personal beliefs and experiences with families. Is there a common misperception about, about families that you find yourself um, talking about a lot? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a common sense that like families are going down the drain um, in general, that you know, in the in the good old days, things used to be better. Um, some things used to be better for some people. Some things used to be worse for some people. Um, so I, it's hard to really, you know, it's hard to generalize that way. Um, but one thing that I think um, a common misperception is that divorce is just more common than it used to be. Um, it is more common than it used to be. Um, but it, but um, but more common than it used to be a long time ago, like a hundred years ago or fifty years ago. Um, in the last 10 or 20 years, divorce is actually becoming less common. Um, and so that's surprising to people and it kind of clues us into some important changes that are happening like um, people are getting married later, people are getting married after they have more education, um, there, there's more selectivity in marriage. So some people are just either choosing not to get married or they don't have anybody that they want to marry, um, which is good if what you want is marriages that last a long time. Um, you know. So you, know, you have fewer people getting married just because that's what you do. Fewer people getting married because they're stuck with somebody. Fewer people stuck in marriages because they're, uh, they, they can't support themselves on their own, so they can't leave an abusive marriage. Um, so all, all of those things are happening, but 
when when you put them together now, the the fewer marriages, the marrying later um, uh, has turned into a decline in divorce. Um, even though we have more choice, we have more divorce is more available than it used to be, um, which is great, and it's happening less, but partly because um, uh, marriage is actually available to less people. So it's it's a mixed bag, but but definitely this idea of like divorce going up and up and up, which is a very common misperception, is is no longer the case. Right, right. Our families are, you know, in some ways very stable and not changing in other ways changing a lot. I know you're working on the, the third edition of your textbook. Um, what's something that you've had to update since the last, um, the, la the current version? Um, yeah, so the second edition, um, uh, when the second edition we had um, uh, a same-sex marriage just coming out um, and um, we didn't really have any, um, a, a lot of good data about what was going on with same-sex marriage. Um, and so that's improved. I worked really hard to try to get better information. Um, it's still pretty hard. Um, uh, you know, a lot of um, states don't really record um, the gender of the people getting married, um, which is, seems odd, but they just have sort of spouse one and spouse two on their marriage certificates. Um, so, you know, the, the data is still blotchy, um, but we're starting to learn more. Um, and in a lot of ways, we're learning that um, same-sex married couples uh, look pretty the same as different-sex married couples. Um, and so, but I tried to put that kind of through the book. Um, mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, the rapid change that's happening is also um, on sex and gender and language and culture and attitudes, transgender um, identities, uh, non-binary identities. So like the language had to get revamped, even though the last version of the book was only a couple of years ago. Um, I used to have a whole section on androgyny and now I don't even talk about androgyny anymore. Now we have non-binary identities. Um, and um, uh, uh, the, the, so some of the medical stuff and some of the, the research on conflict and identity and well-being in these different groups um, has, all, has all evolved quickly. So I, there's a lot of new stuff in there. Right. Along similar lines, we know that um, COVID-19 is having a, a big impact on families, but, you know, data collection is really hard right now, and we don't really know what the lasting impact is. But I was curious if you could speculate a, a little bit about what you think uh, the impact of the pandemic might be on families. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it's huge. Um, you know, nothing will be the same, at least for a long time. And by then, nothing will be the same. Um, I think... Um, one way that I think about it is that things that are happening now kind of will tend to continue happening. That's just sort of a, a way that society works. So like working at home is going to be more common now forever, uh, you know, and, and, and um, certain things about the way certain things we do at home will be that way. Um, other things are extremely disrupted right now and we don't know what will happen. Um, we know a lot fewer, a lot of people canceled their weddings or didn't get married that were going to get married. Um, we are pretty sure that a lot of people are not having children that were going to have children this year. Um, they've either, ju they just put it off. Um, and then when people put it off, you know, some people never get around to it. So the drop in marriage and childbearing is probably going to be really big this year and next year. And we'll see if that continues um, and what effect that has. Um, in terms of... Um, you know, the subjects I pay most attention to, I think inequality is um, going to be exacerbated. I mean, I, I sound a little like a broken record on inequality because I think everything's related to inequality. Um, but, uh, but when you look at, uh, you know, I'm interested in um, the things that we don't see about families, like who gets to have a family. Um, you, um, you know, we talk a lot as if everybody's in a family, but not everybody's in a family. And some people aren't in families because um, they don't have access to the resources or the people. Um, like when gay marriage was illegal, it was like, well, okay, there's, there's a bunch of people who can't have the kind of family they want. But now we have people who are um, stuck with their families um, that they don't want to be stuck with. Um, we have, um, speaking of trans issues, we have trans young people who are living with their families that don't accept them. Um, we have people living in abusive situations. Um, we have um, kids um, trying to go to school at home um, uh, where the um, inequalities will be magnified between those kids who have, you know, parents have tons of education and resources and extra rooms and computers and, and can work at home with the kids and parents that don't have all those things and 
all the gaps and inequalities we have, whether class and race or between um, happy and abusive, all those things, I just feel like the gaps are opening up right now. Um, and it's going to get um, more unequal before we get out of this. So um, uh, I think that's, that's mostly downside. Um, obviously, it's a terrible crisis and a pandemic. Um, but one of the things that I think we're going to see a lot of is um, the gap grow between people who have great family situations and people who don't. Um, <laughs> not great news, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot of work to do, you know, for not just to um, study these things, but also to fix them. So, um, uh, the good thing about um, the good thing about what we're doing is um, we're going to spend some time teaching and learning this fall, and, um, and see if we can figure out ways to uh, address some of these problems. Yeah, interesting time to be a family sociologist. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today, and um, really appreciate it. Very interesting. Thank you.